I met them. They come and arrested me. They forced us to carry heavy goods, sack of rice. They forced me to remove towards Kitgum. On the way to Kitgum, they forced me to kill a certain man, and he was one of my friends. So when they forced me, I refused. They beat me. They tortured me. So if I didn't do it, they will kill me. I was afraid of dying, and the way they were touching me was so painful to me. I stood up, I shot the guy. The rebels came and attacked us, you know, whereby they beat my mother terribly. Somebody was standing over me with a gun pointed at my head. And they were shooting bullets around my mother, kicking her, beating her with gun parts. And I would say that we were the first people to be displaced. It's our prayer, dialogue in Juba. They your fruits, it's our prayer. Peace return, Northern Uganda. Peace return, it's our prayer. From Weyale to Atia, Mega. From Kalongo to Pakwa, Mega. Gulu, Kitgum, and Pate. One or two, Mega FM. Kun, the chief of the LRA, was trying to come out with a system of destroying this culture and saying that he wanted to make a new Acholi culture. So those are things we, ha we, we, we really fought by microphone to make sure that the boys whom he abducted together with the girls get to know that there is life after that kind of problem. Uh, 
ka mietu lok me kwa ki ja ki koro bot wun lu te an me wa me chuli ma yang ke ma wun te te i had to convince the government to record me and some of the rebels who would be rescued we used to record and take the recording to radio uganda by then there was only one radio in the country the whole recording everything was done in my bedroom so the army would rescue young people young kids from the jungle bring to my place we record them so a proper use of radio makes peace for the people and my bino wono winyu am i laying ni timu kijalu mu kuma ene ye blanket amnesty barnia madit ma umu kum yendan may bir there's no way you can escape and cross to the government soldiers. Yet at the time you're having a weapon, that was this, that was a very tough way that you, you cannot earn yourself to the government at that time. You're having a weapon. You also fear, I'm having a weapon, I might be shot. You feel you're in the middle of death and life, and you choose one of the two. It's not possible because you're there on your back. If you, have, you take off like this, somebody shoots you. That's why we, you had to, you had now to stay. There was a law enacted called the Amnesty Law. It was only when the radio program became very effective, that is when people knew that that law was really for them. I was very surprised when I surrendered. It just came, oh, one, has, one person has remained here. Immediately what they, when, 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 when the commander came, <laughs> he started giving me water. That was <laughs> the first time I, I also had mineral water, mineral water. Yeah. <laughs> I thought I was just coming to no one, but when I realized that the family is still there and I saw the way the soldiers treated me, I just said, oh, <laughs> there's still hope, there's still hope. traditional justice system has been important. Taking the life of another person is not a good thing in actually culture. Uh, forgiveness and reconciliation uh, because we want to live in harmony. We don't have the spirit of an eye for an eye. That is very important in our culture. The LRA, they forced me to kill one of my friends. When I came back home, I couldn't sleep because I can see that guy in my eyes. When I try to sleep, the guy can appear in my eyes. So when I sit down with my parents, they say I should go and meet the people. They take me and meet the guy's parents. And I explain that to them. They say, I have no intention of doing it. And even I refuse to do it. But the way they torture me, the way they beat me, make me do it because I also fear for my life, you see. They forgive me, they say, okay, we are now forgiving you because you have no intention of doing it. Yeah. So there's something they do. Here in Acholi, we'll call it matter of foot. They put the egg down, step on the egg. Mm. That's how, that, that, that's what they, they do to me. We are now friends with their family. Professionalization of the process means reconciliation in cooperation of former rebels in the holy positive transformation in the people. My aim was to go back to school. My parents, they were poor. They cannot raise money for me to go to high school. A friend of mine was telling us about this training center here in Golo. 
called Northern Youth Development Center. I asked the teacher, say, yeah, the school is here. We want, we want children. If you can come and study, it's fine. Then I asked him the price, say 300,000. When I got the money, I went back to the center. Started training the center. I was doing welding and metal fabrication. The UNDP was funding the center. So you pay half, they pay half. I was doing welding, SQ. I was learning as you are doing. So welding is something very good. In any workshop, you get job and you start doing job. First, you should not be lazy. The center was established in 2007. There was a big population of disenfranchised youth, young people, who during the conflict had missed out on lots of opportunities, economic opportunities, education opportunities. So government of Uganda appealed to Commonwealth Secretariat to establish a center here in Northern Uganda that would provide skills to this population of young people, skills that would help them to rebuild their lives. We have directly affected about 11,000 young people. After the training, I could not get done much money to open a workshop. Then we came with the idea of contributing some money so that we can start a small workshop because they give us a welding machine by the center. So we come here and start doing welding here. And in the process of doing welding, I started saving people. Some of my friends, which have been in the bush, I started saving them. And I started moving to streets, looking for these street kids. I get them, I bring them here. I train them. After training them, if you have a heart of staying with me, I let you work with me. If you want to go out, I let you go out. So I've been training youths like that. And up to now, I'm still training youths. A young person who has learned a vocational skill needs more than the skill and the certificate he goes out with. He needs a lot of apprenticeship, he needs some internship, and probably some hand-holding. So my action in a workshop is to fight against being idle. Some youths that now, you find them robbing people, breaking people's houses, and you give them jobs, what to do. That can help them better than being idle. And also letting women and girls know that they can also do what men can do. Because they fear, they put the fear in themselves that they cannot do what men do. So I'm here showing to them that they can also do the same thing like men. That's what I'm showing to them, the community. I was in holidays, that was in senior four, vacation. Then I had to get myself busy, that's when I, I met Louise and he offered to be training me here. I lost my job, I was moving around. I met him on the way. If he can get for me at least any job to do, then he was like, I have a workshop, a garage. If you can help the people paint, the materials they have made, then it's okay. I do cutting, welding, small things like chairs, and painting. Painting is my favorite. For us as UNDP, the demining exercise that really went through those regions so that communities are back to their origin and were able to live life in dignity. Seeing those lives back was an inspiration that we continue to drive us even today.
I have a dream to set up a model farm, to invite all these farmers to come and see how farming can be done in a modern way, where I can train people and where I can do research. Got some funding, we were able to buy land, and we were able to buy some cows, and that is how the farm started. We are showing the young people that farming can be exciting. Farming can be cool. I want some young people to say, I want to be a dairy farmer. We grow three seasons of maize. We have a year-round feed for the cows. We grow mainly maize because maize has high energy. We transform that maize into silage, so you can imagine the energy that is stored in silage. There's more sugars in the silage. We also grow other vegetables like cabbages, onions, tomatoes, but that one we sell it to the local market. Our land is the biggest resource here. We can grow vegetables here which can be exported. People are all craving for vegetables everywhere. We can have commercial farms. There are just a few farms here, which is not enough. We could develop agricultural industries. We used to import palm oil from Malaysia. At that time, we still had insurgents in this place. The farmers were basically in internally displaced people's camps. There was no source of income. Now, sunflower came handy as a source of income for these underprivileged people, the communities. So we started working with a group of about 500 farmers. Now, the 500 farmers who didn't have any source of income started producing sunflower. Today, as we talk, 10, 13 years down the road, we are working with over 70,000 farmers in this region. I started veterinary medicine. I am a vet. I am responsible for performing the artificial examination. Uh, I'm responsible for the health checks of the animals. She's also pregnant, so two pregnancies, man. Life is good. <laughs> we are doing artificial insemination. We want to change the genetics of those cows. We want to make sure that those cows are producing better milk in the next two, three years. And that means we need uh, liquid nitrogen to preserve the semen but you have to drive to Entebbe to buy 15 liters of liquid nitrogen. That is a challenge. I am responsible to see that the housing is correct, the milk is sold in time, and we are producing quality milk, and you know, that's exactly what I do here. Whatever knowledge that we have, we should come and just use that knowledge to bring transformation to the community. I had the passion to be a transformational agent. I had the passion to do something with my veterinary medicine that will impact on Northern Uganda. Using the knowledge that I acquired from the university, if I give you an advice that will bring money into your pocket, that is my happiness. brought in the seeds and introduced what we call contract farming with the farming community to give them confidence 
that whenever you're going to produce, you're going to get a market. And once farmers realize that there's a market for what they're going to produce, definitely they had to go full swing and started full-scale production of sunflower. This was a real relief for the impoverished people who were living in camps. We decided now to bring in other crops to support the fertility of soil. So that is when we, bring, we brought in uh, soya beans to be used uh, as another crop for crop rotation, but will also give people opportunity for getting money because we had a market for soya beans. So right now we are processing in Lira both sunflower and soya beans. We also brought in a, a maize mill to support the maize production. So with all these three crops, definitely farmers have really achieved a lot. We have schools, there are many schools, but the question here is, are they quality schools? Do they have all the education facilities? That is the big problem, only few. I see there are schools, but not many have education facilities. Maintain the power, I mean the base. That is the base for the logarithm as well. Then you interchange these two, where the 16 becomes the logarithm. We knock the door of the people who are able to support us, like the UNDP. They supply us with solar system. You know, they supply us with a computer. So we beg, we are beggars for the good of these students. These young kids, I call them the leaders of the country of tomorrow. They've got all the potentials, singing. And they become composers tomorrow. There are those who are really gifted in sports. There are those who are intelligent, very intelligent, and they could become very good doctors. The gun, the war, the violence, these are useless. But all these children, they went through it. They experienced the war, they experienced the violence. But education is helping them to let them know that violence destroys. Fighting cannot create any development. Let us sit down and develop our God-given talent. Actually, people talk of rights, children's rights, women's rights. Women are coming out openly, you know, and forming groups. They mobilize themselves and speak out their minds. And I'm glad that we are together with them. Uh, we have been advocating and you know, coming out with documents that support women. It's our attitude that we need to change. The tradition was that it is not the best thing to do to support children whose parents are not known. This was very a tough thing. And it is still the situation with some of those who have come back. They are still stranded and are struggling to see how to be really reincorporated in the community.
Group with Chaka, Mali, where you are a chair. My group in a Chaka, no down for Tim and now. He be on the watch, I be on a Kibunga penny, and maybe no mere anti a baby group. Kiawa and Pane, Cabetuara, Piano Latin Matica, and Nova Gare. No old old gate on do down, down, and around around Bilkate and Alu. Piano water down by Lua, Chaka Bill, and Lemon, and Nakinara, what in a community. Don't wait as I will be in a group, one don't get jealous and call me. I don't want to be a group, don't wait no on the end. What's our baby group, Kenya? Piano, no, better, 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 me fool, or me, I was out bullet chop. Kenya can't be like I'm leaving me. What's our baby chop, or baby chop, or no baby chop, or can't pop a coin, or what's our yoke of meal? What's our long jerk and piano full foot pair? What's our meal? He took a drama mogul, he can't paint, down to our pump piano will of you. Oh, Chino Market took a long walk, I took a drama with a mob and drama with Tony. What's our talk of drama? Camille was our mate, no one's out doing with a tree terror. What tree terror? Pian mate of a channel, Mitchell Ben. Women can use, maybe access the land, but sometimes they don't own. And the biggest percentage of the population, besides the young people, are the female. They are above 50%. And they are the producers, but if they cannot access the land, that becomes a problem. <laughs> That's how I might take a car, not only my dear dying in your Alpadian. Piano could be Latina Chulo, though OAP one. Piano could be Latina Chulo, though OAP one. Down when you win, you give me your Germany. Kick Wagwar was here a little corner, catch him. And the chip more take a bowl and he down again, and he came here to get more. He can't catch another in school. Piano was poor, he tap me do it in it. The women have surpassed it all. They have been consistent, they have been committed, and they have been passionate about making this project happen. We decided that, you know, let's employ more women because they seem to have more urgency for the money to try and help their children. Many of them are child mothers. They lost their husbands during the war. And that commitment that women have at home is the same commitment that women transfer in, their, in, the, in the workplaces. <laughs> Actually, sub-region right now is peaceful. Education is going on well. People went to school. They got their degrees, they're back home. We have seen new leaders, new youth being elected uh, in leadership. This is quite inspiring. So by, the, by that, I mean there is hope now. For the people of Northern Uganda, what you see on the front pages is all about war. You know, there's been war, there's been massacre. That has been, you know, the history for the last 20 years. There's nothing good that has ever come from Northern Uganda, you know. So we 
we as the new generation, we are rising from the ashes. The people of northern Uganda, they are quite bright. You go to universities, you go to colleges and schools. People respect them. You know, they are there, they are brilliant, they are smart, they can do very good things. The money, everything we need is from the land. The fertile soil was not given for nothing. God gave us the fertile soil for a reason, for us to use that to transform our lives. Whether you're a doctor or an engineer, somehow this land is going to contribute to your livelihood. The people of Northern Uganda, the skills that they gain from abroad, when we rally them all together, I think there is a big investment potential with them that we haven't used at all. The skills, the knowledge and expertise that they have. In actually in the past, nobody would want to do business selling pancakes by the roadside. They won't, they won't at all. But now you get people selling mangoes, pancakes, bananas, uh, which is good. There are over five modern farms, you know, 10 cow modern farms that are springing up on different parts of Gulu. And that is exciting for us because we are beginning to impact and if have effect in the region. This is one of the most beautiful national parks in the country. It's rich in terms of wildlife. It's got the forest, the swamps, the plains, the grasslands, the woodlands. All these are special habitats to the animals. The antelopes are so many, the buffaloes are many and the elephants is really impressing. At least when you move around, you really see families with young ones, which is a clear indicator in wildlife that the population is really uh, impressing us. What we are seeing right now is really a mega step in the life of this park. The rhino that disappeared in 1980s is about to be reintroduced in this park here, which is a good innovation. And how does this come in? It's through the support of these agencies that help us, that we work together with. We see roads, we see bridges, and all those are now much better in northern Uganda. When the war ended, the UN, the UN family, UNDP, UNICEF, WFP, uh, all went to the north. And that really gave northern Uganda a very big push in terms of settling down and back to normal life. The park management does revenue sharing with the local people. 30% of it is submitted to the local people. We allow them run projects like uh, farms, schools, and healthy centers. These are really very, very special things to the local people. People are very enthusiastic. People are very hardworking. People know what they want, and, and therefore they embrace the programs. They're very positive. Yay! Let's go. 
Right now, northern part of the country is developing. We now have electricity up to the rural class. They have clean water now and health sector. In Uganda, it is the people who have the resilience. It is the people who are hardworking. It is the people who are really ready to transform, to think forward. We chose Northern Uganda as a target region and also target population of the youth and women. And that is an output that we can say this is a contribution that UNDP made or making. We target the youth and women basically to make sure that there is a livelihood, there is employment opportunities created, we value the people and we serve the people of Uganda. in the people and the region of Northern Uganda from hopelessness and destruction.